Well, hi, everybody. Tony Rebus along with Josh Cox, the American record holder at 50K. We're here at the Universal Sports Studios, Westlake Village, outside Los Angeles, in the Valley, as they call it. And we just got finished uh, broadcasting the 2011 Rotterdam Marathon, where Wilson Chibet, in his second marathon, bested Vincent Kipruto, also from Kenya, 205.27. The winning time, 205.33 in second place for Kip Ruto. This was a world record assault today. They had six pace setters, went through the halfway split in 62.07. They had the pacers, they had the field, they had the course. It's been the site of two previous world records in 85 and 1998. They wanted it back desperately again this year, but Josh, they did not get the weather. That's always the wild card. Yeah. And it was a beautiful sunny day. Good for racing, but not great for world record attempting. Right, as an athlete, you train your tail off for, you know, 12, 16 weeks getting ready for this one day and everything has to go perfect when you're talking about setting course records, world records, mm -hmm. particularly the this sub 204 mark that Geb <laughs> said. I mean, that's the bar is pretty high and temp temperatures at the start were 54, 55 degrees right. and that's 14, 15 degrees higher than what you're really looking for. The average temp for the top 10 times has been 41 at the start and 51 at the right. finish. So you're already above that. So you know it's going to get warm and... Uh, as an athlete, you go, maybe it's not going to happen today. Yet they still made the attempt. Uh, they were out uh, in 14 to 1438 for the first 5K. Uh, 1441 is the 5K splits throughout, which is necessary for a sub 204. It wasn't until the 25K mark that they fell off world record pace, but Rotterdam is this long loop course, and at 19 kilometers, you're at the bottom of the course. Now, there wasn't much wind, but whatever wind there was was from 19 to 33K. And that was just enough to slow them down. That those 10K from 20K through 30K was enough, and and that knocked them off the mark. And there was great, great carnage behind our two leaders. You That's look at it. guys in that lead pack. I mean, especially Faisal Alessa, who was seventh place in this race. He ran 2:11:42. That's off a 102 flat first half. That's a 109 30s second half. But what that's that's a hard way to go 42.2k. That's that's a death march of the <laughs> realest kind. I mean that's that that's tough sledding, <laughs> but that's what happens. And a, as an athlete, your choice is hey go with this group up front with the Pacers or go into no man's land back with back, back with the Rye Makers. Right, and that's what essentially Rotterdam has going for it. It has to compete against Boston and Rotterdam for the top talent in the world. They don't have the budget. Now there was a three hundred and fifty thousand dollar payday on the line for the world record here in Rotterdam today, it didn't happen. But this was the top seven guys, they called them the Magnificent Seven, the contenders were all guys with 206 or 205 personal bests, but they were young guys on the way up, had not run a lot of marathons. This was the place that were gonna make their name, and next year they'll go to the New Yorks and the World Marathon Majors in Berlin or Chicago or Boston or London. This is where you make the name. So they're willing to sacrifice greatly for that opportunity, and of course Rotterdam gives them their chance. Now, on the women's side, Phyllis Angari from Kenya, former runner-up at the World Half Marathon Championships in 2009, in her debut runs 224.19, but runs a negative split along with Hilda Cabet, a Kenyan native, now a citizen of uh, the Netherlands. They did the opposite of the men, didn't try to bite off too much at the right. beginning and had a really good race. Well, and a as an athlete, you're looking at the temps and you go, okay, maybe they did have hopes for running a couple minutes faster if it was perfect ideal conditions but you look you look at the temperature at the start and you go okay let's dial it back and they ran perfectly all the fastest times you'll see are run even splits or even negative splits by it by a couple ticks and that's what they did here 112 35 through the half and mm -hmm. 111 and change on the backside. so they they ran perfectly beautifully of credit to the pacer there as well all right so world leading times here in rotterdam just not world record times next next weekend of course, we have the London Marathon on Sunday, the Boston Marathon on Monday. For our purposes, let's talk about the Boston Marathon. Uh, the American hope there, once again, Ryan Hall, who was fourth in the competition last year, 2.841, I believe his time, the fastest time an American has ever run on the Boston course. Unfortunately, it came at a 2.05.52 day for uh, Robert Kibrono Chariot, the new course record holder. Uh, There's a great field. Geber Geber Merriam, the New York City Marathon champion, is there. The guy I want to see, Bakana Daba, the Houston Marathon right. champion, in his debut, runs 207.07 with a bathroom break in the final mile. He's the training partner of Geber Merriam and Marcos Gennetti, who just won LA in 2635 in his debut. It's a whole new world order in marathon racing today. These kids, 20, 21, 22 year olds, with all this track speed right. coming right to the distance. Well, and and that's the thing. You're seeing these athletes, the, the East Africans, bypassing the whole, hey, let's run around the oval for a couple of years because they know, hey, I, I can go run 26, 48 on the track and I get 
uh, 900 bucks and a Coke and a smile. <laughs> and the, I can go over here and, and if I run 205 at Rotterdam, I'm going to make some money. But in the subsequent marathon, I'll get six figures to show up. Somebody said, maybe it was Dabe, he ran 12.58 last year in Oslo at the Bislett Games. He was 10th place. I think he made a couple grand tops. Right. A friend of his, or somebody he heard of, with the Dublin Marathon the same weekend, ran 209 and won $20,000. And he goes, okay, $20,000 or a sub-213. I think of what I'm doing is going to the marathon. So these guys, they're attacking the distance. Question is, how is Ryan Hall going to do? Last year, he tried to do an even pace job where he looked at his watch all day long and he didn't really. He run. I said he ran concurrently, not against. Is he has he changed his modus operandi at all? Is he going to go be competitive this time and run what they do, or is he just going to try to run even again? Well, I think you know, two oh eight's nothing to nothing to you no. know, sh shake a stick at. I mean, it was it was a phenomenal race and. The way the East Africans race, it's particularly in a championship style event. You know, Rotterdam that we just saw, this is a time trial. Berlin, London, Chicago, these are time trial races. They're not championship style races like you'll see in Boston or the mm -hmm. World Championships or the Olympics, where anything can happen once that gun goes off. Right. And in Hovington, you don't know what's what they're gonna do charging down that first hill. So as as an American guy, it's you're looking at it and going hey the overall goal is to get to this finish line as fast as possible right. i don't know if i really need to throw in that 66 second surge in the middle of the from mile four to five and if you can sort of gauge yourself if the leaders go and it, it that way run a steady tempo type effort rather than this massive fart lick. and then wait till wait till you get down late after you know after kenmore square sure. or before kenmore square then start racing whoever's around you at that particular time exactly what kind of shape is ryan in he's coming off a 63 change at the new york half again he ran a 63 inch change at philadelphia last year and pulled out of the chicago marathon with the same sort of buildup right and you know it's tough to say ryan ryan's been in flagstaff we've we're really good friends one, one of my closest buddies and uh i know that things maybe didn't go perfectly for him in in new york you know, sir, certainly he wants to run better than, than 63 minutes, but I know that his eye is always on the prize when he's prepping for a marathon. It's not about hitting your objective along the way. It's all about nailing it on goal race day. So, we'll, you know, I'm hopeful and keeping my fingers crossed. For Some him. people consider this a crossroads marathon for Ryan. I mean, he's got such expectations based on his sub-60 minute 2007 Houston half marathon, his spectacular Olympic trials victory in uh, New York City in November of 2007, his uh, 208. Uh, uh, six in uh, yeah. London 2008. He's got all the talent, got all the credentials, just hasn't done it in a while. And so the pressure seems to be on. And it, a lot of that's got to do with the hope that the Americans have for somebody of his talent to completely deliver on that talent. Is he, how's he, how's he handle that sort of pressure or does he put it out of his mind? I think it's tough. And I think you just sort of have to block out all the, all the external onuses that people are just, you're the hero, you're the second coming, let's go, let's make it happen, let's win the major. Uh, it's it's tough, and anytime you have a outside pressure, it's uh, it's it's going to take its toll. But I think Ryan's hand handled it really well. I just uh, Ryan has the ability to hit the 500 foot home run. Right. His his ceiling is as high as any American runner ever. Right. And so there's this expectation of, hey, where's the 5940 again? Where's where's the 20617? When show us that. Right. When as an athlete, uh, you're just out there, you're plugging away and putting in the miles, and you're He's harder on himself than anyone is on on him. So he he has high expectations as high as everyone else's is his at his is his are greater. So he, he expects great things as well. Well, we shall see next Monday, the 18th of April. Right now, we'll wrap it up. Uh, Josh, congratulations on the victory at uh, P.F. Chang's in Arizona, yep. and more so, congratulations on uh, New Sun Asher. It's been a great 2011 so far. Yes, it has indeed. Fantastic. All right, All right. thanks, and uh, we'll talk to you later. Bye for now.